At this point we have a lot of bees that are still hanging on in the crevices and eating all that honey out. But most of the bees now are either in the vacuum or along with the, uh, the hives, the brood, and, or the, the frames with the brood and the honey that we put over here in this hive. The bees in the vacuum will be reunited with the hive in their new position. We're getting the tape to seal up the hive that we have now created and transported. And then we'll strap it all together when it comes. Is the box that's on the vacuum going on top of the the uh, frame with all or the hive with all the frames that you just put in? That's correct. So as soon as we put this in this new location, the whole vacuum box will go on top. We slide the drawer underneath, and then the bees will fall into the box. And we'll leave it there overnight. And when we come back the following morning, all the bees will now be in the box with the frames, and the vacuum cleaner will be empty. But that's only done on site, that's not done here, right? We do that, on, yes, on site, because it'll take a couple of hours for the bees to get moved through, so we'd rather do it on site. So some of your viewers might be asking about the funny color of the box, of the hive box, and why isn't it painted white like everybody else's hive box is? And the answer is quite simple. Um, paint's expensive, it takes time, and it's got to be reapplied on a regular basis. Uh, what we found is a Canadian product called Eco, ECO, which is an organic product that you could use. It's fine for humans, for animals, for nature. And you just dip the wood, and it's a lifetime warranty on it. Uh, most of it is this darkish color. It'll go a little bit darker and then a little gray in the end after a year or so. Um, but the hives we've been running, we've got two hives that have been two years now, and they're in a better condition than the ones that we painted or varnished. So our plan is to move over to use this type of uh, treatment, wood treatment, in the future in all our hives. We still have the vacuum running, trying to capture some of those bees that remain or that are coming back to this log. But we're also getting the hives ready for transport and then we're gonna be cleaning up the area, uh, get rid of all of our tools and, and just try to, try to make it just a little cleaner and a little neater before we take off. That process took a lot longer than I expected, but it was really cool to be a part of it. Uh, my part was mostly just observing and showing the video, but Mr. Mark here being the lead did a great job. Thank you, sir. A pleasure. It was nice having you with us. And Mr. Michael, the landowner allowing us to be here and to save the bees. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Anytime. And Miss Julie here in the background doing all the vacuuming. She did great work. Thank you, Julie. Oh, thank you. It's been great. Really moving along here. We have water about 80 yards over here. There's a pond right over there. Then we have another water feature about 100 feet this way. Then we have that earthen dam, which is, I don't know. It's empty at the moment, isn't it? Uh, it's a little shallow right now. It's, there's some uh, it's light water. But then there's some mud puddles back here. So we have quite a, we have, we have water within the area. And there's all kinds of uh, plants popping here. I'm on location now. The, the bees uh, that came out of that log are now in the back of a van. They spent overnight combining the, the hives from the vacuum to the hive box. I'll let Mr. Mark explain that process. Right now, Mr. Mark and uh, Jim, a local beekeeper, are getting ready. They're lighting their smokers and getting things ready for uh, putting these bees into a hive at this new apiary. Um, so the 4-H, so what I did with the smoker is I used grass at the bottom, dry grass that I just pick up from the tufts and then I pack it tightly with wood chips that I find low, lying around. Um, the oak pine needles, at least the pine needles are great for starting it. The only problem is they have a lot of, of resin and tar with them that clogs your smoker. So I don't like using that because it clogs up and I've got to go and clean the smoker afterwards. 
the secret of the smoker is that it continues to burn even when you're not using it and to get it to do that you need to have a high density of wood in there or twigs so that it maintains the heat when you get smokers get the large one and not the small one the small ones run out too quickly and it's also good to get the ones that have got the uh, wire around it to protect it from touching and burning anything else What I'm doing is these are the PF107s from Man Lake, which are the 4.9 millimeter size cells. The feral colonies in our area is 4.5 to 4.7, so we should be really looking at 4.7, but we cannot buy that, and that's why we're going to be making our own. Um, the bees take generally take quite well to these. They are pre-waxed, uh, and what I like about them is the wax moths can't destroy them and they're very nice to spin out. You can spin it at quite a higher rate to get the honey out of it and they don't collapse on you. Uh, when I clean them, I just use a pressure washer and I clean them off, I have to clean them. What I have found is that to encourage the bees to take to them quicker, I take a bit of wax that I have um, prepared. This is wax from my uh, hives, melted down, and then I just rub it over the top and that helps with creating a scent the bees say oh this is okay we can build off and it also leaves some wax behind from which they can then start using to build their cells so the frames that i've pre-waxed using this they take to a lot quicker than the frames that have come commercially pre-waxed jim i noticed when i came in there's one hive over here in the apiary yes and that hive is yours yes and how long has this apiary been available to you and, and uh, how many hives have been in it since you've gotten here and, and what are the plans? It's uh, since June, June 23rd. Currently there's one hive in this apiary. It's really a bee yard. Um, our plan is to get up as approximately about 12 hives would fit into this apiary comfortably and it wouldn't overpressure the area with the amount of bees that would be in 12 hives. Yeah, I think that's about it, right? So you think 12 hives is the limit, and that's that's the plan for this yard? I think so yeah, that's a. I think that would be a good size because this 31 acres. Even though we have a quarry to my uh, north, we have housing communities across the freeway. I think that this area right here with 12 hives would be uh, a good number. So you're basing the number 12 on the available forage area? Correct. Yeah. Of the acreage around us. Watch out behind you. We'll get in there and check that apiary out, the bee yard, uh, here in just a few minutes. Thank you. When we sucked up the bees, we sucked them up into what we're calling a bee vac, a vacuum cleaner for bees. And it is a modified version, it's about my fourth design, and I might go to a fifth design. It's Bee vacs make it very easy. Um, the only thing to can be concerned about is the vacuum pressure. If your vacuum pressure is too high, or I should say vacuum suction is too high, you burst the bee and the bee will die. Some of them not immediately, but some a day or so later and they will die. So you have to keep the pressure low enough that it doesn't do that, but high enough to get out, suck up the bee. One of the techniques is, you know the bee can fly at 15 miles an hour, so if you just put a sensor on your bee vacuum and make sure that the wind going in doesn't exceed 15 miles an hour, then you're okay. Uh, some beekeepers say, but then the bees can fly out and you don't suck them up so much. Yes, that is also true, but at the end of the day, we're doing this for the bee's sake and not our own sake. The vacuum cleaner I use is homemade. I use a bucket vac, a vacuum head which uh, you can get from Lowe's, Home Depot, or any of the other stores, you buy it online. And um, generally you want the one that's the smaller one, which I forget, the, this is a 6.5 amp, and I think is a 5 amp one. That's ample. And what I did is I made a lid for it to, to fit on. So I have a disperser plate in here, which is about a half an inch separated from the top of the vac, to try and equalize the suction that goes on. And then a very soft rubber around the edge that forms a seal on top of the box and on top of the box we have wire netting to keep the bees out in there and so we can suck through that uh, the box I've made is a nuke size I have two sizes I have the nuke size and a full frame 10 frame because at the end of the day when I'm finished with it I will put the, this on top of the hive now if I have a small number of bees, I'm going to put the bees in a nuke box and not in a 10 frame, in which case, which is why I have a nuke. For this particular hive, we put a 10 frame vacuum cleaner, as you saw in the video, and that fitted exactly on the top of this one. Um, 
the bottom has a slidable board that comes out. So what you do is when you put it, when it's full of bees, you put it on top of the hive and then you just slide the bottom out and the bees will migrate back into the box underneath. And then when they're down, you either just give it a little bump or a little shake, if there's a few that is left, you remove it and you close the top of the hive. Uh, the entrance that I've got around here, uh, it's got various names of it, there are various different types of uh, entrances. Um, I like this one, it comes from a beekeeper in Huntington Beach in California. It has two settings, there's a venting setting and then a full open setting and my standard hoses fit into here. I wouldn't go for anything that is smaller than this because your speed, your velocity of your air increases and that's going to be detrimental to the bees. Open when I'm sucking, close it off when I'm finished. When I'm transporting the bees back in the car, uh, ventilation is really important so the bees don't overheat and in the vacuum they will get very hot, they're agitated, they're flying around, they develop a lot of heat. Uh, the best way to carry them is to have the box tilted on its side. And the reason why I do that is that cool air can go to the bottom and the hot air comes out of the top. Whereas you have it this way, the ventilation is not very good and they will overheat. So that's an important thing when you're transporting the bees in the bee vac. We put all the bees into one box and I'm a bit concerned that I've got a too high density in there so I am going to put a second layer on top. And in the second layer here you'll notice I've got nine frames and a feeder. I'm putting the feeder in there because I need to encourage them to draw wax and they're going to need reserves and resources to do that. So they will get some um, sugar water for this first time, it only holds a gallon and that's all I'm going to put in there just to help them stay at home. You'll notice on the frames here I've got the plastic 4.9mm frame. This is a feral colony, they are small and in fact even these might be a bit big for them. And then on the outside I've got two of the standard 5.3mm frames which will be their drone frame, drone comb frames. On the frames you'll see I have a Y pattern down the sides. Some beekeepers will also put the year that this frame went in. And the reason they put the date for the year is because every three years they will phase out that frame. They'll take it out, they'll melt the wax off it and put it in. Because the premise is that the bees are bringing back insecticides. And the insecticides do collect and concentrate in the wax. So to keep the wax clean they cycle the wax out every three years. The Y I have in here indicates household positioning. Housel was a fellow from Florida that caught a lot of swarms and when he caught the swarms he then had a look at how they positioned the frames, uh, the, the comb, and he noticed they always positioned it in a particular way. And so as a result of that uh, I've started looking into it as well. If we take a frame out and we have a look at it and you look through the frame, through one of the cells uh, it, with the sun behind it, what you should see is a right side up letter Y. It should be pointing towards the center of the frame. If you turn the frame around and you look at the other side and you do the same option you will see an upside down Y. The cells are not put directly behind each other but they're offset by 50% of the size of the cell. Housel found that the Y facing should always face the center of the, of the hive and that's why you'll find that I've got five frames pointing to the center and one way and four the other way. So this is my center frame. By doing that you keep the temperament of the bees calm and they seem to be more productive. The other thing you'll notice on the hive stand that is here, the hive stand is made in such a way that the, the entrance will slope down and this is to ensure that should any moisture get in or collect in the hives it will flow out of the bottom and not congregate in the bottom of the hive. Remember, moisture inside a hive is probably the worst evil you can have in the hive. The bees will die quickly because of that. The sugar solution that I'm using here is a one-to-one -one solution. So it's one cup of sugar with one cup of uh, water. I've added to that uh, some vinegar. The bees like an acidic environment and sugar water is slightly alkali. So to make it as natural as we can, we've put in some vinegar in there and I put a drop of tea tea oil in there because I know that the bees are not going to be taking this up in the first day. It will stand around a little bit and I don't want any funguses and things like that to grow into it. But this is only for the first time around. If I ever subsequently feed this hive I won't be using the tea tree oil but I will still be using the white uh, vinegar. Something else to consider with hives, particularly a new hive that you're starting off with, is the fact that they will be inundated with hive beetles. 
doesn't matter what you do, the small hive beetles will fly in from anywhere. And so we want to set the bees up as best we possibly can to deal with them, particularly while the hive is still growing and in a weak state. Now hive beetles themselves don't cause the destruction of the, of the hive, but if the hive is weak and can't get rid of them, then their larva will. And so we try and help the bees with that. They're, what we tend to use is Swiffer, Swiffer pads. She has, she has an unscented Swiffer pad. Very fluffy, you can also get the toweling. And we put this one at the bottom of the hive and one at the top. Uh, and then what will happen is the hive beetles will get stuck in here and once they get stuck in here the bees will then bite their legs off and they will die off. So we just put one loosely on top of the frame and this one will go at the, on the bottom of the hive when we put the next piece in. And I'll leave it in there for probably about a week or so. When you come back you'll find there's going to be a lot of beetles stuck in there. Uh, if you have beetles and the beetles don't seem to be going there, just put a little bit of powdered pollen in there and that will attract the bees in there. It's a very effective way to reduce the hive, the hive beetles. Now this, this box is the one that you had the vacuum top on and you combined them, correct? That's correct. So on Saturday you would have seen me put frames in this bottom box. It has six frames of brood and four frames of honey, plus all the bees that we took out. And so what we're going to now do is we're going to uh, lift up the, bo the box because what would happen is that during the vacuuming we would have got some sawdust and some other things. The bees would have driven this down to the bottom just to help them out. We're going to lift it up, shake off the screen bottom board and then put it back on again and we'll put a second frame on top there once we've done that. This when, box here? Yes. Uh, once I've opened up the box here we're going to get a lot of bees coming out so just be aware that's going to happen. I am going to put a re entrance reducer on when we build it. We'll use the largest piece of the entrance reducer just to help the bees for the first couple of uh, days, maybe a week or so with protecting their hive and also controlling um, temperatures. That's a screen bottom board on that one? There's a screen bottom board on there and we can hear the, be the bees. In my own apiary I noticed that whenever the bees get riled up their, their pitch goes higher. They have a higher, higher pitch uh, overall hum and you notice the same thing when you work with them? Absolutely. My normal practice is I'll come along and I'll just tap the box and listen for that pitch. If the pitch goes up, I will leave them that day. I will not come in there. Unfortunately with this one, we have to go in today. The pitch has gone, has gone up, the bees are agitated, they've been moved, they've been locked in here for now 24, 36 hours. Um, they want to get out. So um, the pitch is higher, they are going to come out. They're probably going to take some revenge on us, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, but it has to be done. Well we suited. Have... Well suited. Yeah. Well suited. Always be cautious, but um, they're in the apiary they're going to be left in, so the bees that do come out here will stay in this area and they'll come back in here tonight. What I think I should do is rather put the second layer on first, Jim, okay. and then we'll lift the bottom lift off. The bottom the I'm not up. worried about increasing weight, I'm just worried about where the bees are going to go when we do that. Okay. So if you can help me and lift that off, and we'll put this on straight away. Yep. So there are the bees. Yeah. Turned it around so we've got the hole this side. Where's that? That hole there. You want to jump above the feeder. So the top board I think is really essential for here in Texas. And we've got a feeder on the feeder hole here. So in the future if I do have to feed, I don't have to take the top off. You'll notice these bees are small bees. They are the uh, definitely the feral bee, which is going to be a 4.7 to 4.5 millimeter diameter bee. Okay, you want to brush them in? No, just. Are you concerned at all? Uh, this is just my question about these clusters containing the queen. No, I'm not concerned at all. The queen should be lower down. If she is up here, she will go lower down. We just don't want to squash them. Let me just get these guys off the side here. Sure. Okay, just put that on top. Here we go. It's not seated. Yeah, let me slide. There you go. Okay. All right. Here comes the bottom. Oh, thanks. thanks. I heard yeah. at least one crunch. Yeah, heard it. That's going to go that way, it's going to go that way. Mm -hmm. um, 
Okay. All right, I'm going to lift it up and will you just sure. take off the shirt? Sure. Most of what fell on the ground was uh, just debris from the log and dead bees. Dead That's bees. right. Now some of the bees would have been squashed. Uh, some of the bees would have had a higher vacuum pressure in there. Uh, so there is anticipated small loss, 10%, 15% of bees. All right, that's it. Oh. Yeah. I'm going to lift that, just push it in the back here. Line it up. Great. Um, the migratory lid I've got on here is heavy and is designed to be heavy, so we don't really have to have something on here. But in this this area, we do know we've got hogs, so that's why we're doing the precautionary putting the strap on. The bees don't like banging or knocking, so this bit of loose strap we need. Just tuck it in somewhere so that it doesn't float around. Uh, the bees don't like it. So when we get wind, it doesn't blow away. Right, so we wish them good luck with their new home. Um, they're going to be doing orientation flights very quickly around here to find out where they are. They know they have been moved, so I don't have to put grass in front of them. They've been in here, say, for 36 hours already. Um, they're going to come out and investigate what is where. And then we'll come back here in about two days time just to see how things are going and where they've settled down. Hey Mark and Jim, thank you so much for being a leader and an example in the community with the hives that we're placing out here. I appreciate your time and letting, letting me record this process. It's a pleasure, Blake. Thank you.